let us see this question. A very straightforward question, I do not know why it was uh, given in the gate exam, a very direct problem. Anyway, uh, there is also MCQ question. What is the worst case number of arithmetic operations involved in recursive binary search on a sorted array is sorted, that is the requirement of binary search and we all know binary search makes a uh, number of comparisons for performing the operations, arithmetic operations or whatever operations is proportional to log n, right, is proportional to log n. So, therefore, since it is sorted in an array, right, so worst case number of arithmetic operations performed recursively will be nothing but order of log n uh, in binary search. Now, look at this, this is also a very simple uh, NAT question. Consider a complete binary tree, kindly observe tree is complete with 7 nodes. So, how will the tree will look like with 7 nodes complete 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, complete binary tree. Let A denote the set of first elements, A denote the set of first elements obtained by performing breakfast search. When you carry out a breakfast search of this tree, I will get the first three nodes as 1, 2, 3, that is it. And let B denote the set of first three elements obtained by performing depth first search. Depth first search when I carry out 1, 2, 4, that is it. So, I got the sets A and B starting from root, root is 1. So, what is the difference of the sets A and B, A minus B? Naturally, it is element 4, so a cardinality you are referring to 1, so therefore the answer for this is 1 straight away, that is it. Look at this third question, it is also slightly interesting, uh, is a MS MSQ. Consider the following directed graph, one of the vertices at the bottom is marked as S, which of the following is or R? correct about the graph. The graph does not have a strongly connected component, why not? It has a strongly connected component. If I take this subgraph, which is one strongly connected component, it has and uh, a single vertex is also a strongly connected component. So, straight away this, <laughs> this choice, sorry, this choice is wrong. A depth first traversal starting at vertex S classifies three directed edges as back edges. What is back edge? Back edge connects, let me write the definition of back edge, leads from a node to its ancestor in DFS spanning tree leads from a node to its ancestor in depth first spanning. Now, rather than performing the depth first search over the whole graph and try to find, I will show for one. So, from there you can continue and uh, get the answer. So, if I perform a depth first search from here, the one which I have marked, if I perform the depth first search starting from S for example, see what happens. So, I start from S, then I visit uh, one of the nodes, I will temporarily mark it as ABC to perform to make you understand the meaning of back edge. So, I go to A directed graph, from A I have to go to B for example, I am taking only this case. So, therefore, I will come to B and from B I will go to C, depth first search. From C there is no possibility of going to S because S is already visited. So, therefore, for this particular subgraph, for this particular subgraph, Basically, this is the depth first search spanning tree. So, what is the philo philosophy of it? Now, with among in this graph, the only edge which is left over in the graph in the spanning tree is nothing but C to S, C to S. So, if I mark this edge, this is nothing but back edge for that particular subgraph. That is the definition of back edge. Leads from a node to its ancestor. So, S is an ancestor of C. So, therefore, this is example of back edge. So, like that if you perform starting from S, depth first search traversal starting at vertex S classifies three directed edges, this correct choice. So, you will get uh, three direct, uh, directed edges as back edges for this. 
Now, for each pair of vertices u and v, there is a directed path from u to v. I do not have a path from u to v, like you take this vertex, there is no outbound edges, so there are, where is the path? So, this option is straight away wrong. So, option b is correct so far. The graph does not have a topological order. What is topological order? We have seen the definition of topological order in the uh, lectures so many times and if you do not know, you can see the textbook for topological sort. Topological sort is nothing but linear order. is linear order, right, which begins from a vertex which uh, is not, not having any incoming edges, means there should be a source vertex. If you look at this graph, there are sink vertices, these are sink vertex, they are sink vertex, but this is uh, not source vertex because S depends on the uh, edge, this edge, right, on this activity, S depends on activity from C. So, therefore, this particular graph, if you observe, does not have any source vertex, no source vertices, no source vertices. So, therefore, I cannot start my topological sort, I cannot perform any topological sort. So, therefore, if I have uh, this particular graph, like if you take this vertex, it depends on this, A depends, depends on S. If, if I consider starting from here, it depends on these two this depends on this, so every vertex if you observe has a dependency. So, that means I cannot start uh, the topological order for this, this graph has no topological sort. So, therefore, this option is also correct. So, what are correct options? B and D, B and D are the correct options for this, got it? Right, there is also a very direct problem. Let H be a binary min heap, min heap, binary min heap consisting of n elements consisting of n elements, okay, let me change the color, consisting of n elements implemented in an array. What is the worst case time complexity of a optimal efficient algorithm to find maximum element? Maximum element in min heap will lie at the leaf level. So, we discussed this in the class several times. In a min heap, if you want to find maximum element which will lie at the leaf level, leaf level will have n by 2 elements. So, I have to search in n by 2 elements order of n, that is one approach. The other approach is what I used to discuss in the class always, convert min heap to max heap using heapify procedure. So, this algorithm we have seen several times take time complexity of order of n. Now, the moment I get max heap, maximum element will be at the root. So, therefore, the time complexity of the most efficient algorithm is MCQ question, okay, is theta of n. That is it, that is a very simple question. Let G be a connected undirected weighted graph, consider the following two statements. This also we have seen. Fortunately, this these questions uh, from set 2 were all from what we discussed in the class. There exists a minimum weight H in G. There is some minimum weight H in G, which is present in every spanning tree. So many times this property was discussed by Dijkstra's algorithm, this is not possible. So, therefore, this is false. It is not necessary that every minimum H should be present in every minimum spanning tree, particularly when it is forming a cycle, it is not. So, therefore, by that it is false. If every edge in G has distinct weight, this is a default property as we have seen several times distinguishing between uh, when do we have uh, multi multiple minimum cost spanning tree, when will we will not have so many times, then G has a unique minimum spanning tree, the default global property of minimum spanning tree is always true. So, S1 is false, S2 is true, straight away the answer is this, this is also MCQ question, okay, that is a very straightforward question. This is also a question, master theorem, right, direct problem. For constants A greater than or equal to 1, B greater than 1, consider the following recurrence defined on non-negative integer, this is divide and conquer recurrence. divide and conquer recurrence. Which one of the following option is correct? So, all these options if you observe is nothing but based on master theorem, master theorem. If f of n is n by log n, then t of n, this is not correct uh, option of uh, master theorem, this is MCQ question please. If f of n is theta of n power log n, this is not the correct uh, options for uh, cases of master theorem, right, this is also incorrect. 
हाँ दिस इज पॉसिबल इफ एफ ऑफ एन इज दी ऑर्डर ऑफ एन पॉर लॉग ए टू बेस बी माइनस एफ सिलॉन केस वन ऑफ मास्टर थियोरम फॉर सम कॉन्स्टेंट एफ सिलॉन ग्रेटर दैन जीरो फॉर सम एफ सिलॉन ग्रेटर दैन जीरो इफ दिस इज ट्रू देन वी नो दैट टी ऑफ एन इज टीटा ऑफ एन पॉर लॉग ए टू बेस बी दिस इज क्लियरली करेक्ट ऑप्शन बेस्ड ऑन केस वन ऑफ मास्टर थियोरम right and if f of n is n log n then t of this is never any case of master theorem so therefore this is also wrong so therefore the correct option for this is c as simple as that all right okay next is also similar question we did in the class so many practice problem we did on based on huffman coding so let us look at this consider the string this is the string each letter in the string must be assigned a binary code satisfying properties two properties are there what is it for any two letters the code assigned to one letter must not be a prefix of the code assigned to the other letter this is nothing but the standard property of huffman codes for any two letters of the same frequency if two letters have the same frequency what he says is the letter which occurs earlier in the dictionary lexical order a occurs before b that is what is the meaning is assigned a code whose length is at most at most means not more than is at most the length of the code assigned to the other letter that means if a and b have the same frequency then the length that you are assigning the code length that you are assigning for a should not be more than the code length of b that is what is the meaning of it okay a should be having lesser code length than in comparison to b because a is occurring before b that's the meaning so among the set of all binary code assignments possible which satisfy the above two properties what is the minimum length of the encoded string minimum length of the encoded string so here i have already constructed uh, for your convenience please have a look at it so if you observe the string the frequency of a is 1 a is occurring one time b is two times c is two times d is two times e is occurring three times so if i start con constructing first i will have to take uh, look at this b is occurring before c and c is occurring before d b occurs uh, before d also therefore the code length of b should be having lesser number of uh, Uh, binary bits than c and c should have lesser number than d so d can have more d can have more so therefore uh, as the character lies above towards the root it will have lesser length of the code so that's why what i do first i merge a and d i can merge ab i can merge ac i can merge ad but satisfying property too i should merge ad first the frequency of a is 1 this is 2 so merging these two 1 plus 2 3 okay then i have basically 3 and then these two so i merge b and c b and c has frequencies of 2 and 2 so they give value of 4 right so i have merged these two so what do i have now i have got 3 i have got 4 uh, and the frequency of uh, e is 3 so i have 3 3 4 3 3 4 so i merge 3 and 3 i get 6 i get 6 and then 4 and 6 are merged to get 10 then we follow the universal convention of assigning the Uh, binary bits of left branch zero, right branch one. So starting from root, so this zero one zero one zero one. So what is the code of a? Where is a? A is here. What is the code of a? One one zero. What is the code of b? Zero zero. That means three bits are used for this. B is two bits. <coughs> C is zero one. Two bits. D. D is one one one. Three bits. And E is one zero. So look at that. The core, the frequency of A is three highest. D is also three high uh, lowest right because d is occurring at the end so b and c are having lesser number of bits than in comparison to d following property 2 that's it now for the text he is asking how many minimum what is the minimum length of the encoded string so what is the text here so let us write a is encoded with how many bits 3 bits so i'll write 3 b is uh, have b, there are two bits and every bit need two so 2 into 2 4 bits for this two bits and then there are two c c require two bits so 2 into 2 again 4 there are two c's there are d d require three bits so therefore there are two d's so 2 into 3 6 and then e there are three e's e need two, two bits so therefore 2 into 3 6 so if you add them 7 plus 4 11 11 11 plus 12 23 that's it 
So straight away the answer is 23. So that is the approach of uh, solving this problem straight away.